in the skeletal system too. The body 206 bones can be divided into the axial and appendicular. So the axial are those blue ones that are in the center, and particulars are your limb bones. Where you usually students get confused, the connecting part, the girdle, the pectoral girdle and the pelvic girdle, they still belong to the appendicular. The skull. Uh, the skull are made of cranial bones and facial bones. Facial bone is much weaker than the cranial bones. So the, the cranial bone, its main function is protecting the brain. So uh, most of them flat bones. Facial bones, their function is to create, create your face. So they are most of them irregular bones. Your cranium have a lot of cavity. So this cavity is cranial cavity, orbit, and you have the nasal cavity and the oral cavities. And let's look at the cranial bones. These are the flat bones, uh, most of them, except the last two, irregular. So the frontal, this is the frontal bone. And you have two parietal bones, one occipital and two temporal. When we talk about the, the brain, you found the brain, the lobes, they use the same name. So you have the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, and temporal lobe. So these four are easy to, to identify. And let's look at these two. These two are more difficult. Sphenoid. Sphenoid is the one, they only see this one. This is the sphenoid. It's in the, in the bottom, in the base. That's where the brain sits. So you only see the, the wing part. And you can see it in next slides. The ethmoid. Ethmoid is in your nasal cavity. So the upper part of your nasal cavity is the ethmoid. So let's look at the sphenoid. So sphenoid, we took the skull open. You found this, like a butterfly, and that's the sphenoid bone. So sphenoid bones, the brain sit here. And from the, the bottom view, the sphenoid, no, sphenoid bone look like this. So the sphenoid bone, that's the sphenoid bone. Uh, why it look like this? Because the brain sit here and the center part called the cella tussica and this where your pituitary gland, your uh, most important, one of the most important endocrine glands sit down. And that's the cella tussica. So this is the sphenoid bone structure. You have two wings and that's the cella tussica. So that's where the uh, pituitary gland sit. And it's say in the in the bottom part of your cranium. So from the late, later view, uh, later view, you only see a small wing. That's this part, the greater wing. Uh, this part is called the body. And let's look at the ethmoid bone. Ethmoid bone from the outside, you see very little. You only see this part. And the reason is, it's in the upper part of your nasal cavity. So that's this bone. And you found this bone has a lot of folding. And the reason is, in your nasal cavity, one function is to heat up the air. And the air can be dry and cold, especially in the winter. And your lungs, your lungs is humid and warm. So one function of the nasal cavity is to heat up the, the air. So they make a lot of blood flow into here. And they want to increase surface area. That's why you have a lot of folding. And let's look at this one. This one called the perpendicular plate. And by the way, um, this help a lot of your uh, your lab. So your lab uh, overlap pretty well with the with the lecture. So you need to know the name of the bone and also some structure in the bone. And I will cover them in the lecture. So this one called the perpendicular plate, and this is in the nasal cavity. So your nasal cavity is one area, and it need to be separated to two. So the upper part is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. And let's look at this and this. This is called the concave. You have superior concave, middle concave, and inferior concave is actually a bone. So these concave are the foldings, and their purpose is to increase the increase the increase the surface area. So the superior nasal concave, middle nasal concave, they are part of the ethmoid bone, but inferior uh, nasal concave is actually a bone. And let's look at the nasal cavity. This is your nasal cavity. It's separated by two, uh, by, uh, by the structure called the nasal septum. So let's look at nasal septum. 
The upper part of nasal septum is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, but only the upper part. And the bottom part is vomer. So vomer is a bone. It's a bone. It's like a blade, triangle blade. Just sit there. So the vomer and perpendicular plate of ethmoid bone together. And you see the anterior part. Okay, let's put the cartilage. So they put the septal, uh, septal cartilage. So all together, they separate the nasal cavity into the left and right. So it's called the nasal septum. And the nasal cavity, and the upper part, when we talk about the sensory system, your olfactory, your smell, you have the olfactory bowl and will go through the, uh, the nasal cavity and put the fiber in the nasal cavity. So when you smell, the air particle is going to move into your nasal cavity. The upper part is going to pick up the signal and will send the signal, turn it to the uh, neuronal signal and send it to the brain. When you get sick, you have a lot of mucus totally blocked here. And it turns out you don't smell well. And for the food, for you to enjoy the food, the food need to taste good, also need to smell good. And when you get sick, you block like 50% of the sensation. Uh, that's why you lose your appetite. The food does not smell good. And let's look at the suture. So suture glue uh, the bone together, your your. Uh, frontal bone, parietal bone, this one called the coronal suture. And between two parietal bones, this is called the uh, sagittal suture. And in your parietal and occipital, this one is called the lamboid suture. So also in the lab today, you will, you will look at those suture, only those big suture. And let's add one more, the, the temporal bone. So the temporal bone connect with the parietal bone. This is called the squamous suture. So these are the basic structure. Now let's look at the temporal bone. The temporal bone connect with the parietal, connect with the occipital. It also connect with the sphenoid. This is sphenoid. So the temporal bone, this is where your ear is located. So this is actually your ear canal, but in the bone it's called the external acoustic meatus. So that's your ear canal actually. Now let's look at some protruding. The protruding in the bone is called the process. So this one is called the zygomatic process. It's big word, official name is zygomatic process of temporal bone, because this is temporal bone, it's part of temporal bone. It's called the zygomatic process because it goes to connect with the zygomatic bone. So that's the zygomatic bone. So this is the zygomatic process. And now let's look at another one. This one, styloid process. This is a big one. And the third one, this one, mastoid process. Uh, when we talk about the muscle, there's a big muscle called sternocleidomastoid. And this muscle is huge, has a huge name, but it actually tells you where it, uh, its origin and insertion, where it starts and where it ends. So sternocleidal, it starts from the sternum, sternum is around here, and clavicle. It goes to the mastoid mastoid process of the temporal bones. This is a mastoid process. So it will go to here. And this muscle around here is support your head and also you're able to rotate your head and because of the dead muscle, sternocleidal mastoid. So three processes we talk about in the temporal bone. And one meatus. Now let's look at the facial bone. Uh, your face is like a 3D puzzle, so all these are irregular bones. Okay, so uh, your palatine bone, that's this one, and create your uh, oral cavity. And vomer, we talk about the vomer. Vomer is the one uh, together with the perpendicular plate of ethmoid bone together and uh, the septal cartilage together create a nasal septa, separate nasal cavity. So that's the bomber. And let's look at the inferior nasal concave. So we talk about the superior nasal concave, middle nasal concave. They are part of the ethmoid bone structure. That's why the ethmoid bone has very a uh, unique structure, irregular bone. But the inferior nasal concave is actually a bone. It's a bone separate. 
there. And all the concave, their function, increase the, the surface area so they, they can heat up the air. Now let's go to this area, orbit. So there are totally seven bones create the orbit. So for your eyeball to put inside. And the big one, well, you can, you can guess a few of them. Like your frontal bone must, must play a role. And here your cheek, so you have the zygomatic, and you have the uh, maxilla, your upper upper jaw, right? And we talk about the sphenoid bone, the butterfly, it must be there, and also your uh, your ethmoid bones is there. So you, you, you have most of them. And the rest of them uh, are cremal bones, and well, these are the seven bones created the old bit. So if you are familiar with more with those big bones, actually, well, you, you can you can you can create the orbit. So these are the bones create the orbit. Okay, now let's look at this area, digomatic arch. Why we talk about this? Because in the muscle, remember the muscle and the bones they work hand in hand. There's a big muscle go to here. Mesenter. Yeah, this is the muscle you chew. You choose. So it's going to attach to the zygomatic process uh, and zygomatic arch. Zygomatic arch is, is actually created by two uh, processes, so two bones, temporal bone and zygomatic bone. So the, it's mainly the temporal bone because this one is called the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. And this part is called the temporal process of zygomatic bone. So together, these two processes is called the zygomatic arch, and this is where the the messenger connected. And in your face, you have some uh, empty area called sinus. Uh, they're empty, so uh, sometimes you have infection. You have mucus stay there. Okay, now let's look at the three small bones. These are very small. These bones, each one of them is smaller than uh, 0.5 centimeter. And these bones, they stay in your middle ear. Your malleus, incus, and stapes. The malleus connect with your eardrum, tympanic membrane, so it's around here. And these three connect together like a hinge joint. So when your eardrum push, goes through the malleus, goes through the incus, go to the stapes. Stapes connect with your inner ear, the cochlea. So it turns out it's gonna push, push the inner ear, and inside the inner ear you have liquid flow. So it mechanically transduct the movement of the particle to the eardrum and to the push of the liquid flow in the inner ear. So three bones. If you damage them, uh, you lose your auditory function. This bone called the hyoid. So it's it's the bone in your vocal cord. In your vocal cord, most of them are cartilage, so you only have one bone, it's called a hyoid. Okay, let's take a short break.